historically, it looks like they do hand the brood off to Moo. Looks like, uh, or sorry, the brood off to monkeys, and they've had uh, Moo doing. Uh, it looks like he's gone middle. He's done like some safe lane, so a little bit of swap up going. I guess it looks like it's very hero dependent in terms of their laning. Um, so, but yeah, no Darkseer banned out, of course. Very nice counter to the brood. I guess now you just kind of look and they're going to ban out the Sven, kind of one of those wombo combo heroes, and we'll lose the TA as well. Um, any other big signature heroes you're, you're worried about in this situation? Well, I think the thing I'd be a little bit more worried about, signature heroes are always a bit of a problem, uh, but there's a lot of physical damage already on the side for Archon here, and I think that Dazzle might be a, a key support that you might either want to ban out if you're not going to try and take them for complexity, because while you do obviously have the presence of the Dark Lord, which is going to help you out a good deal in terms of that minus armor de compartment, I think that uh, Archon, particularly if this mood rather, uh, Broodmother ends up picking up a relatively early Desolator, could start to wreak havoc on top of your back line with a dazzle weave going down as well and then tusk of course a good amount of physical damage does have the magical as well with the ice shards as well as the snowball but that big right punch if you've got a desolator somewhat in there as well as the weave down he's going to tear you to shreds yeah, and um, again, all that physical damage, the Winter Wyvern's still available, and we have the Darks here too. So yeah, I was just going to say, Archon's going to snag that up. You're going to be up against Darks here, Winter Wyvern. So I uh, really like that. Good good drafting tactic right there. I'm positive that Complexity would have picked that up with the Shadow Fiend as well on their team. Oh, totally. Yeah, and, and like you said, the, the ban pick on both of them, it just makes a lot of sense. It does synergize fairly well with the, what combos you might be trying to go for. Um fact that the play style of Archon here is probably going to be more along the split pushy lines trying to find pickoffs, so a long range initiation with the Winter's Curse and then also if you want to be able to sit the Winter Wyvern in lane, the Splinter Blast at the max level does one shot those range creeps and you can keep the wave consistently pushed out. So all in all just a, a great hero for what looks to be the draft mentality of Archon which is more around sort of wrecking havoc and they're going to pick up a bounty hunter now for complexity maybe hoping to win this uh, early game and if they do start to take a bit of a lead that can really start to snowball with the bounty hunter track gold coming in yeah hero uh, he has kind of fallen off lately you know he's not exactly that first pick first ban that we had nearing the end of ti but still very strong and of course the brood mother so she already kind of acts like this pinata right like she gets all farmed up um you know it's kind of her thing she gets a head she gets a couple big items but if then you can group up as a team and start knocking her down you get all that bonus gold like the comeback gold going on to your core heroes that are over there to knock her out and then you not only can you track her using the bounty hunter but you're going to multiply that effect using the track goal bonus so um very very good pick here i mean they got rid of the spirit breaker for kind of the same idea but uh the bounty is going to allow the the same concept but they will have the night stalker with that kind of overarching vision a little Ten bit of combat uh going on between the the whole vision war and then of course once you have the Five gem eggs it's remaining. pretty scary for someone like the bounty hunter reserve time with complexity's draft here is because if you think about what the matchup is um you sometimes have a trouble breaking into high ground with the bounty hunter and before you were able to get really great vision with the track now you don't get that anymore you just get the vision of the individual hero but if you have the fact that you have somebody up there tanky in the front lines at the shadow fiend just hitting away at those towers with maybe a mechanism up on the dark seer behind the uh, stage as well you're going to be in a really comfortable position and bristleback Yet another hero to counter that brood. No matter where she goes, she is going to have a bad time. Yeah, we saw this uh, in the earlier series, the power of the, the mech Shadow Fiend. And we talked about having a hero that could potentially pick up the mech. So it'll be interesting uh, what kind of decision they do make, whether it'll be the Dark Sea or the Shadow Fiend. But uh, Bristleback is a great hero to have, like, just kind of walking in. Like, he can just sit there, punch the tower. Shadow Fiend's a little bit in the back. The things start sieging together, and it's starting to look like it's going to be something very similar uh, to what we saw earlier in that brew draft. But Ursa the Night Stalker, Tusk, Winter Warman, and now an Ursa, much more combative compared to something like a Spectre. So I don't think we'll see them get totally run over. And um, they don't really have, like, bag. I guess their initiation is basically snowball in those big brawlers and just go at them. But man, what a great team to be a Darkseer against. Melee, like, hard hitting illusions. 
Uh, I'd be pretty excited if I was uh, going into that off lane, which I assume is going to be Swindle Darks here. Yeah, I, th I think that um, you're right there. He has moved on over into that off lane role now that uh, Ping Vincent is going to be in there as the mid laner. So. I think that uh, yeah, it's a it's a great hero for the combination. He's going to be able to uh, lay down the vacuum wall into it. They don't have a ton of lockdown right mm -hmm. now. Is the big thing I'm concerned about. And hopefully this last pick is going to rectify that a little bit. Lion is still in the pool. They go for the Crystal Maiden. So a nice combo there as well, the vacuum wall into the CM ulti if you're able to make all of that hit. Uh, also just the, the really great lockdown that you get out of a CM. Six second cooldown on that, uh, the frostbite as well, is going to mean that Ursa is definitely have to go for a BKB. Once that comes online, it becomes a little bit more scary for complexity. So probably looking to uh, try and do their best to end this game a little bit earlier, I would imagine. Yeah, and I really like Crystal Maiden when you're in a draft up against the Broodmother, simply because one of the best ways for most heroes to clear out the spiders is their AoE spells. So Bristleback, Darkseer, even with the Ion Shell, and even Shadow Fiend raises, Crystal Maiden aura just means more more spells, like more spam, able to knock down the towers. You can TP into a lane, even if you're like on your way home, let's say, like you're kind of low on mana, clear out a few waves of spiders and get you know back on back to base. So uh, I'm pretty down with that. It is true, though, they don't really have that big AoE lockdown that you're looking for, but I think they felt compelled to get a range support and they you know they didn't feel safe getting something like an earth shaker so uh, it's understandable but you can definitely feel there is a little bit lacking compared to what we usually see with the darks here we'll see if that ends up coming out to uh hurt them in the end i think that um pretty much if they're able to find the lockdown that they do have and make those spells count they're probably going to be okay but uh if they are not able to hit on those or if we get a snowball to break apart the frostbite or something else like that after the fact you could be in trouble but starting it off right we'll do a quick little introduction of the players fluff and stuff is going to be playing tusk for team archon we do also have jai who's going to be on the ursa winter wyvern this game is going to be played by Whitebeard. over towards that mid lane looking is going to be monkeys forever on the brood mother and also up here at top is going to be moo playing the night stalker and on the Radiant, it's going to be Swindle. Moving over to that off lane on the Darks here. It'll be Z-Freak on the Bounty Hunter. Vlad on your support Crystal Maiden. Ping going mid on the Shadow Fiend. And then Ziz, Zizzy on his Bristle back. So looks, uh, I'm interested to see. It looks like it's some sort of an aggro dry lane here. That's pretty scary with the uh, with the Ursa into a Snowball. You know, get, uh, they only have slows though. Like uh, I guess in the Ice Shards too is pretty good in terms of a uh, like terrain stun to get off a lot of those... Uh, Swipes, so the get get the bear begins. damage going. Only see how they stand. I, I, I like up. there as well the the uh, shards that can come on out and trap somebody in there with the Ursa as well. Certainly not something that you want to end up getting into. And I think that once hit level two gets hit here, you're going to need to be careful. Uh, Bristleback obviously a pretty tanky hero in terms of being able to deal with any of that damage, but even he has some trouble with the Ursa once you end up getting all up in your grill. Yeah, now uh, <laughs> Pink's up against his mid brood, so I mean, we've talked about heroes that can deal with spiders, and he's already got a sentry ward. There, There is one here for a monkey. This is so important, actually. Like, this little tango battle they're going to have here for the sentry ward, and uh, if he catches Ping using one of his tangos to regen up, he'd actually have a complete advantage in terms of getting rid of the sentry, because he has no basic tango, so there'll be a 60 second cooldown. So there's like a real mm. tango meta going on here always pretty good to see and considering brood did buy her a whole stack of her own it definitely adds to that as well does look like we're going to be able to get the body block here they don't necessarily know that there's a ward down considering they uh did move over to sort of faint the body block there plane okay they thought they were going on the night stalker but not going to be it's just prods here and there from time to time as these uh oh there's the jump forward is going to be able to get the tango oh he didn't use a tango for it because he ended up going for the uh tango to heal back up like you were mentioning and while we were talking about that bristleback does fall jio in the bottle lane after the snowball forward man tango meta right there that was monkeys monkeys played that perfectly like he saw the second he saw the tango regen on the sf he just like went in and got rid of his entry it's really well played yeah. 
this is such a tough matchup right now for this Bristleback. He just needs to get more points. He'll spray to DOS as much damage as he can, but Jayo is continuing to apply this pressure here down bottom, and one, maybe two more hits, it's all it's going to take. He hasn't taken a level in Bristleback yet. He's trying to get up as many stacks of the cool spray as he can, but it's not going to be enough. Another kill now, and Z-Freak can only look on in dismay as their safe lane Bristleback continues to fall. Archon with a 2-0 lead, and... Not looking good so far for Clexity. Yeah, and if uh, if Jo gets up to the phase boots, like he can just run them down. <laughs> They're gonna have uh, the frostbite from the crystal main, but that's essentially their only control. Uh, I don't think he can afford to go into the goo early on either, because he just needs these points and the quills and the respect. Oh, it looks like Swindle might go down top lane, getting chased under the tower and night soccer. Still daytime, still scary. That's really weird. I looked away from there for a second because the Dark Seer ended up surging up and I thought he was just going to run away, but apparently not quite able to make his way out of there with only one lo one level in that surge is going to mean that the, uh, the Night Soccer is able to pick up a kill. So across the board, um, these lanes just not working. The one little piece of solace that you do end up having is the Shadow Fiend in the mid lane who's been able to get for 16 last hits, killing out a few of those spiders along the way, but still behind the Ursa because of those two kills. Yeah, and despite the advantage, he's actually still tied with the brood in terms of like net worth. So, it's it's not a disaster, but Monkeys is gonna have to be careful that you know he doesn't feed away too many of these spiders. SF is already kind of a dangerous comeback here in terms of farming stacks. So, got to Oh man, it looks like again Vlad's gonna be gone on here by Fluff. Sure, it's there. Yeah, this is just a lot of damage. Uh, we also have the Bounty Hunter here, but I don't think that they're going to be able to make this happen. The Crystal Maiden was level 3, but not quite enough mana, unfortunately, to be able to cast out all those spells. Now Darkseer is here, Save but he's century. not going to do anything to keep these reclaimed. He's, he's dead. The Sentry game, too strong. 5-0 and oh start. Complexity. Oh, and Swindle is going to end up getting caught yet again. Does oh. have a shards. Ends up catching him. Oh, one more right click is all that you need for the Ursa as well as the Tusk, but not going to be able to find it. Crystal Maiden ends up hitting the Frostbite. Kiting a little bit going on now, and looks like Jayo should be able to walk away from this one okay. Sort of feigning the return back in, but again, you're rotating on in Swindle. Oh, nice job. This is going to end up being a lot of damage dealt out very quickly. It's going to be able to get Cold Embrace, though, as well as a Snowball. Oh, Jayo ends up falling, though, to the Blast from the Crystal Maiden, and across the map, nobody's really doing anything to rotate at this point. Another surge forward. Fluff and stuff is going to fall now, and just like that, what looked really bad, buyback oh, no. by the <laughs> Winter Wyvern. Might be able to get a kill over here. Darkseer did fall behind the Tier 1 tower, and Whitebeard, uh, look Looking for blood now. Oh, is he going to be able to get it though? Is this honestly about to be a dieback well, if the bounty on shows. this Witcher Wyvern? Oh man, that was close. He was almost able okay. to get some sort of a Splinter Blast play there, but uh, good good play there by Vlad makes himself stay ahead. But <laughs> it's like Z Freak will be the, the sacrifice to the J God, and uh, Jo gets a little bit back there, but. It's sad, it's sad he went down, but he's, he's feeling okay. He's 4 and 1. I think he's having an alright game so far, and those phase boots are just, just a little bit away. What the hell is going on in this game, man? The Ten kills, it's five minutes in. They're just running at each other over oh, and over more again. Oh, there's dead. Location <laughs> <laughs> over to the top lane to try and get any semblance of farm, but it's nighttime right now. That means Night Stalker's out ready to eat your face um, with his face. And looks like the Broodmother's starting to be able to take away the jungle from the Shadow Fiend, and this is really, really relevant here. Uh, the only way that this ends up being somewhat okay... Oh, never mind. Coming forward is going to be able to jump on top of them. Does end up hitting with the shards. Not going to be able to find the kill, unfortunately. Dust does end up getting popped. Is going to hit one more shuriken on top of the Broodmother, but a little bit too fast that time. She makes her way out, but three heroes committed now to this mid lane, and again, you're getting a lot of farm on this Night Stalker. Well, as the... Um, the Ursa down in the mid lane is going to be able to... Oh, I thought he might go on Swindle, but Surge up, you're going to be fine. Get away from my creeps. <laughs> Get all that farm. It's kind of kind of so, an interesting draft. Like The the amount of farm that you're getting towards this Night Stalker is insane. Like, he's the top net worth on his team now. 2-0-0 oh, no, and all those last hits. And now, like if he goes into early... Well, he's already got the phase boots, but pick up some dust, start hunting down Z-Freak. And, and with the Snowball and the, the Ursa, like, how are they ever going to stop them taking Roshan? I don't think they can. Yeah, it's a, definitely going to be a very tall ask for that. Um, they do have the Vacuum, obviously, which does help a good deal, but Simple's now actually just going to have to run away with the several heroes rotating in. Shards can come out in a second, but just going to be a little bit of harassment for Fluff and stuff at this point in time. Urge good enough to keep him alive, and Monkeys Forever is going to continue to take away this jungle. Although there isn't anybody farming or even soaking up EXP in the mid lane right now for Archon. 
Yeah, it's true. I'm not sure if they're. I mean, they're trying to make something happen down bottom. It's unlikely they'll be able to get the Derek's here. Pretty, pretty slippery. And it, it's kind of strange that you're seeing Moo farming through a full nighttime. Um, we see this sometimes with the newer night soccer because the change to the day cycles and stuff. It's harder for him to get a lot done. Oh, too bad Zefric didn't have an eye shell right here. <laughs> He's trying to under white gear. Um, yeah, usually like you want to be more aggressive, but maybe they're just far enough ahead that oh, I can get some farm. Like no one else is really farming on the radiant besides Shadow Fiend, and I'll take care of him. You know, later on. Oh look, he'll just farm heroes. Oh, that works. Blaine. More damage up here again. The snowball is going to end up hitting, gets lifted on into it as well. Maybe to dodge one more of those cool sprays. And now it looks like Crystal Maiden is going to fall as well. This is just, it, it, Archon's game right now, they have a lot of heroes that can fight very early. And it's really distressing. 3,000 net worth at under 10 minutes in. 1,200 EXP as well. And Broodmother is just going to continue to take this lane apart. Um, we also do end up seeing a kill on the Ursa in the bottom lane though. So nice little dive there, able to make it happen. The Bounty Hunter and the Dark Seer, who did end up dying for it as well. So uh, one for one trade with the Bounty Hunter picking up the kill. He gets a closer to that level six. Yeah, and they are they are in desperate need of some some track gold and some way to keep track of this Broodmother as well. Monkeys, you know, he may be just the third net worth on his team, but he's still at almost what 1,200 gold ahead of the second highest person on the side of uh, yeah. complexity so just in general they're all pretty well out of control swindles the only reason he's relevant in terms of net worth is he's just so uh so sneaky <laughs> he's got two points yeah. in the surge yeah he's he just has been able to to a large extent at least um find his farm they've been rotating around the lanes trying to find the best matchup that they can have and uh, it looks like it's going to end up being again the bristle back down here in the bottom but you kind of get the feeling that if you get a rotation from the tusk you're just going to be another dead bristle back here. Uh, they do end up moving the tusk. Oh, I thought about up to the top lane, but he actually has tranquil boots as well. So this build right here is going to be completely designed to just roam around the map and get kills whenever he can, and then heal back up in between by uh, his HP and hopefully being able to you know have enough with uh, to to take those kills and, and make the ganks happen. Yeah, he'll just uh, you know he's got the wand up, so just get brawling, get some stacks up on it. <laughs> Who needs arcane boots and all those other shenanigans? Oh, Whoa. look at that farm, though. <laughs> That's pretty nice for Ping. That helps. That really, oh, really it helps It doesn't a help lot. Swindle, though. Yeah, it looks gonna like be able he's going to get him. void. Oh, actually, there's no mana yet. He's fine. Look how hard he hits for. He hits for over 100 right now. 110 damage from Moo. Yeah, and he's going to be going for it. Do you feel like a Midas is worth it right now on the Night Stalker, considering you're this far ahead? Or would it be more worth it to go for another fighting item to try and farm heroes more? Uh, well, was As we see Z's yeah. die down bot. Oh, he's, he got scared. He's out. Uh, it depends on what he's going with. He's going with the Vlads. Personally, I like Midas on Night Stalker because you want um, the levels for your, your ultimate as well as like your silence. I think levels are pretty important on that hero. Like his stats are just so good. Like the way that he scales, like it's one of the best parts about the heroes. He can have almost no items and he's still so strong. So get some bonus experience, uh, farm up towards your agonims and your gem that you're going to want eventually. And the attack damage is, is just so good because your natural base damage is so high, or rather your attack speed, I should say. So. Yeah. I'm down with the Midas. Even if, even though it is, it kind of seems like overkill, right? Because they're so far ahead. Yeah. Well, speaking of a little bit of damage coming on out. Oh no! Moo ends up blocking Whitebeard and is going to be able to finally get out of there. The Midas saves his life. Otherwise, that creep probably would have been able to dole out enough damage. We do also have Shadowfiend here waiting to Requiem on top of somebody if they end up getting the solid initiation. He is still in Viz waiting for those. Oh, he's going to be able to get this one. A lot of damage coming out now. Killing off Moo almost in Instantaneously track Whitebeard. He's going to fall as well. I think, yeah, okay, he does end up going down. And a double kill for the Shadow Fiend, who looks to be going for a Sanj first, um, hoping to be able to rely upon that Dark Seer to pick up the mechanism. But it's still going to be a while before he ends up getting his mech. All right, well, that's exactly what they needed, right? Get uh, get the track up, get some good kills, get the Night Stalker. He was a really big bounty. Took down the Winter Wyvern, kind of his little cherry on top as well. And uh, Ping, I mean, he is still leading. He's a solid 1,500 net worth ahead of that oh. mother still. Oh, geez. Speaking of which, Z Freak is gonna end up getting a kill here in conjunction with the uh, the track and the the Dark Seer Ion Shell. They were able to kill off a ton of spiders right there as well. Just Z Freak Ion Shell that. Honestly, that crystal, the Crystal Nova, that was a little unnecessary. I mean, come on, Vlad. What, yeah. what? <laughs> no, it's fine. I don't do anything to kill that spider right now. Just someone get him. Top lane, Moo 
does end up putting his mango back in the stash. So not going to get the value regen off of it, but not really a huge deal. And Darkseer, again, just moving around the map. He just goes everywhere right now. Like, wherever he can find the farm, uh, he really needs to be able to get that mechanism up because it does seem kind of like they want to try and uh, apply some pressure with this lineup that they've got. You certainly can really do it. And maybe finding pickoffs is worth it as well, but I, I don't know. It does seem like there's a bit of a group-up mentality out of this lineup with the CM multi, with the vacuum wall, uh, Bristleback just being able to be tanky in the middle of all of it. Uh, he is a little bit definitely not as tanky as he wants to be right now. Um, he has died four times, hasn't been able to get a kill yet either, so a little bit unfortunate in that regard. Yeah, two points into the uh, the Bristleback's pretty scary right now. <laughs> when you're dealing with the big nukes coming from the Night Saga, 335 damage every eight seconds. Like We already saw the second he gets anywhere nearby Vlad, it's about half his HP goes down. Or Crystal Maiden. And it looks like they're going to head on to Zizzy. Crystalback won't save you from this, I don't think. When it just cares just to secure it? Maybe not? Liquid are doing it? Oh, nice. Oh my god, Vlad turns it around with the huge ulti. Able to kill on off that tusk, and then after the fact, the Winter Wyvern just have to walk away. Really good recognition there. As soon as the fall of the stuns ended up getting worn off, she was just going to be able to pop that ulti and um, does actually, interestingly, have three points in Crystal Nova. Uh, so this is an, a skill that ended up getting changed recently, where it scales on up to a 50% movement slow as well as a 50% attack or 50 attack slow. Mm -hmm. And normally you'd think if you want to try and go for lockdown, you're going to be picking the frostbite because it ends up holding you in spot. But the fact that this actually has a 4.5 second duration is really, really great against the Ursa. Kind of a cool build there. Yeah, and it was unfortunate. It seemed like that kill was all but secured, but uh, they've had Wipeyear just like so poor. Like he's the lowest in the game despite them being relatively head for a larger majority and it's understandable because Tusk like he scales pretty well with items like blinks and things like that so you want to keep his net worth high but having enough mana for a splinter blast there probably could have resulted in you know at least getting the kill for the bristleback if not also living in that situation but Swindle looks like that kill will uh, be occurring here. I, I Archon is playing this very well. I, I hesitate to say that they're sort of uh it's complexity playing this incorrectly um but it's it kind of feels like the nature of their draft is very much get up in your face right now snowball ursa into the middle of all of it and do whatever you can to take fights um and because of that, like they, they have a very strong timing window before they get that mechanism up or the other sort of survivability items on the bristleback before he gets his levels up. All right, here's the rotation. They're going to be able to kill Z Freak. He, he just, just paid for that, that track. He tracked up monkeys and was like, aha, got the spider lady. And then suddenly the entire dire side comes up from the staircase. It's like, oh. So that, that's a very nice way to secure Roche. Um, the relatively, like, you always have to be worried if you have any zero on the enemy team and you're someone like the Ursa who's always trying to sneak a Roche and oh geez, Vlad. A little bit of trouble. They're all here though. Is his ulti back up also if they decide to turn on this and looks like Moo's going to be able to just run away. He does have those four points in the Hunter in the Night so he is going to be super zippy throughout the whole course of this night time and looking for a little bit of split push now until they find those items. Darkseer slowly building towards it, still about a thousand gold away roughly before he's going to be able to finish it off and hopefully that ends up being the thing that turns this game around for them. Will certainly help uh, for these engagements that they seem they seem to get caught out a little bit. Um, you can tell there is rather superior vision coming from the dire side, and that does come because you know our combo is relatively ahead. They've got that one board in the mid lane, and it is a little scary up here. Like they can't really see that much. They see the bear down bottom. I think they are assuming that Archon are relatively nearby, and and it is correct. So they'll get the tower, and if they really wanted to, they could even rotate for this. Yeah, it's a little bit risky considering, again, they don't really have that great of vision. Not many people showing in lane besides that Ursa. And, uh, yeah, they are just going to play it safe for now and continue to push on up this top lane. They do end up spotting out the Night Stalker up here. Blink Dagger finished on the Ursa as well. He's going to be able to jump on into this fight if they want. Crippling Fear down top of the CM. They need to create this separation to make sure she stays alive. This is going to be a key component in these next fights. How well are they going to be able to stay alive? Winter's Curse down on top of her, taking a lot of damage. Meanwhile, the Ursa is continuing to chase away on his ease there. He's taking a lot of damage. CM <laughs> ulti does come out and kill the Tusk again. 
no way to interrupt this charge. And now there's the Enrage coming out from Jaiho, still taking a lot of damage. They are able to finally kill that CM. Aegis falls as well. Splinter Blast on top of two. DD Rune is still up on the Bristleback, and it looks like Jaiho might end up falling here yet again. Mu jumping in and trying to find any form of initiation. Another Splinter Blast is going to kill off the Bristleback and running through the wall. They're not afraid of it in the least bit. Come out, I think, a little bit ahead at the end of all of that. Actually, a good deal. 1,400 gold swing as well as roughly uh, 1,500 EXP. Nicely done there by Complexity. I don't know how a Crystal Maiden gets Winter Curse and somehow gets off her ultimate. So well played by Vlad. I don't know what he did there, but it's crazy. Like, this hero, she can be... I mean, it is RNG, right? Like, sometimes it, it nails it, and sometimes it totally blows it for you. That time it all worked out. Picked up another kill. And, you know, Brood was doing Brood things, though, so that has to be taken into account. But with the track goal, they, I think they only got one off during that fight, from what I could tell. Only a single track kill, but, you know, still a track kill nonetheless. And you can see on the net worth chat there, they're all grouping up. They're starting to make their way, catch up to J.O. on that Ursa. We'll see. Yeah. They're they're doing the things that they need to do, and um, they do now have that mechanism finished. This is going to mean that all of the heroes, significantly more tanky, going to be able to sustain in those team fights. And Shadowfiend as well has already gone for the Sanjin Yasha, which means that he's actually going to have some relevancy in these team fights beyond just sort of a walking mechanism. Uh, also is going to be working on what I assume is going to be a BKB here. So more tankiness abound, and we'll be able to deal with a lot of those stuns that are coming out, as well as the Crippling Fear. This is a hero who needs to be able to get off his ulti, definitely. Uh, and hopefully we're going to be able to see some type of way... Like, Vlad has been able to find his... It, really great use of his spells even though he's got crippling and feared even though he's been winter's cursed over and over again all of these spells doing a lot of damage his positioning has kept him alive but his team needs to keep on covering him because if for any reason he ends up getting separated from the herd he is going to get torn apart by the night stalker or the ursa yeah, and this is kind of what we envisioned during the draft. This is exactly this like you got your bristle back and your sf in the front line and it'll all work out well, grab themselves up tower so now that's their third, yeah, third tower down of the game, kind of doing this little five man push. Monkey's similarly doing his own thing. He's actually going to go for the Deso. So a little bit of combat, a little bit of push, kind of a, a nice in between as opposed to like just going full Necro or maybe going right for the BKB. It's, yeah. I don't know if it'll be. Sometimes when you go for those middle builds, though, you can like kind of fall off in, in other areas, you know, like maybe he's going to end up not getting a tower because he didn't have Necro 3s, but. It'll certainly help if they have another Roche engagement. Yeah, definitely. It, it could definitely make a, a big impact in that game. Um, the other thing also that's certainly going to become very, very relevant shortly is the Aghanim Scepter that was just finished off by the Night Stalker. 18 minutes. Uh, pretty ridiculously good timing, and now every single engagement uh, is going to be the one that Archon want to take if they do end up taking it at night, as long as that is. And I think that you now have the potential to find pickoffs a lot easier. Probably should be able to pull him a gem. It might be worth it for him to just buy it himself so that that way the rest of the team can farm on up, considering they're probably not going to take a fight before nighttime. So if you end up being able to farm that up yourself with the uh, the Midas on up on the Night Stalker, that gives your other supports a little bit more freedom to uh, build into their next items, which they do definitely want. I mean, Tusk does have the Blink Dagger now, and Wyvern has really been sort of uh, hampered in terms of what she's been able to accomplish in this game in terms of her far only having that soul ring and the tranquils yeah and when it's the curse is kind of their only big initiation so having a, an eventual blink on on the white beard could be massive but uh for in terms of moo like really he needs bkb like gem bkb that's really the only things he needs for essentially the rest of the game on the night stalker is you kind of make that transitioning move into a utility as opposed to like this high heavy damage dealer that he has been so far and look at him just going at swindles not gonna be able to get the kill yeah, he doesn't but care just beating down he's yeah i mean he takes him down to half hp at the end of all of that and well you do have the mech or regen in there as well as dark seer is just natural purple-headed coneness um <laughs> the regen that comes from that it's it's uh it's 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 pretty impressive uh, especially because a lot of that damage came by virtue of right clicks and darkseer has 14 armor uh, he's a tank relatively speaking and even though he doesn't have a ton of items there it's it, it's going to become more and more scary as this game goes on the ability to find kills on these supports with the night stalker and he's always going to have oh. vision on him as soon as it's nighttime I thought he would offer the blink, but uh, up against heroes like Ursa and even Nightstalker to some extent, and plus the Ice Shards, 
this is a, a really good four staff game, so that actually makes a lot of sense. And it looks like they're probably grouping up for a smoke here, as they are grouping up in the mid lane. One can assume. Definitely. They want to be able to see if they can find somebody. Uh, also worth noting here that we do have um, on the Ursa a BKB almost constructed. He is still just one item away from it. They might. It looks like they are going to be going for the Ancients now. They realize that this is where Ursa is, and this is going to be disastrous. He's still going to be farming throughout this, separated from the rest of his team. Are they going to be able to get here in time to cover him? And I feel yes. like, oh, blinking away. That could have been close. Yeah, and that's going to completely bust the smoke. So uh, the way they had kind of triangulated that positioning was they did have a track up on monkeys for a relatively long time. Like down in this bottom lane, they could see him moving around. So they rightfully suspected that the rest of the Dyer squad was hanging out nearby in case of a gank. And they, you know, they almost had it, but just not quite. And now the counter smoke and oh, this is some really good positioning from Aracon. The vision of the Night Stalker is so key. They want to find this Crystal Maiden if they can. They do end up getting the Silence immediately on the Swindles. Winter's Curse, that's going to be a ton of damage dealt out very, very quickly. That's a Frostbite on top of the Ursa and the Ulti coming out. So lots of damage being dealt, but voided away. There is another wall dropped. Illusions are starting to be created. They've been able to turn this one back around, but the Winter Wyvern buyback as well. Regen Room finally found it by the Night Stalker. He's going to try and get back into this fight when he gets an opportunity to, but the Broodmother was already able to pick off the Bounty Hunter. Another chase now on top of Vlad. Swindles is trying to cover the best that he can and meanwhile up top there also another fight going down it looks like the bristle might be able to turn this on the tusk can they find the kill on the cm they end up finding it and it looks like darkseer might fall as well so two heroes chasing down bottom there is the surge away acting to chase this one maybe he does have a vacuum as well if he wants to go for it but silence back up again and he has forced himself up to the high ground with the tp away <laughs> now bristleback continuing to hit here looks like he should be able to walk away from this one splinter blast is it enough not quite. He's going to be able to just sort of casually make his way out of here. I think that he stays alive. Um, and relatively even trades. If you take a look at that uh, fight recap, does he actually have enough for this? He has a TP that he can buy. Does end up using it now. Um, and yeah, he's out of there. And they actually, uh, they just ping Roche because they had the spiders in there scouting it out. So well played there for monkeys. And a nice opportunity from the go. They know the freezing field's down. Now, of course, Ping still does have everything because he got blown up before that fight started. So he'll have the 10 second BKB. And this is still uh, definitely a winnable fight if Complexity can sniff this out. And they will ping it, but will they get there in time? Question. It doesn't look like it with the fact that Ursa has <laughs> taken this so swiftly. There are three heroes, though, and it looks like Complexity still want to take this fight if they can get a chance to do it. Z Freak up in front. No, they're not going to be able to find it. Freezing Field actually came off of cooldown because that it was a really long engagement and was still able to uh, toss out that Freezing Field at the start. Only 90 seconds cooldown at uh, every level at this point in time. Yeah, again, just that superior positioning <laughs> working out so well. The debites, unfortunately, not uh, not quite good enough. It's so hard without the Shadow Fiend. Like, not only is it the massive damage from the Re Requiem, but the reduction, 50% damage reduction is for five seconds. I think that's often overlooked in terms of the Requiem and the ability that it has to really crush a team fight for your allies. So, really well played there by Archon to get the Winner's Curse. I think that is certainly the target that you would ideally want to blow up before getting anything off. All right, well, let's see if they're going to be able to actually turn this one back around right now. If they get the track onto Whitebeard and then bounce on out yet again. And tossing out the Splinter Blast. This is going to be some solid just counter push at this point. Do you feel like, what do you feel like is going to be necessary here for Complexity to be able to really take the next team fight? I mean, that last one, it, it didn't completely go the way that they wanted it to, and Archon are definitely starting to snowball away. Is there a key item that you feel like they're going to need, or is it more just the, the uh, taking the team fight on their terms? It seems like uh, when you draft a Bristleback, ideally he's your frontliner. He's the one that is kind of bullying. Like, he's sitting up there, he's like putting out his quills, trying to stack a couple on before the team fights. But Dizzy was really far behind, so he doesn't, he's not able to fulfill that role. Uh, and I think that's really what they need in the end, is they just need this Bristleback to actually be doing stuff in the fight. Um, and the four staff, like some sort of another way to save your SF would also be great. You can see they're stacking solar crests on him now. He's got the evasion added as well from his own talisman of evasion, so maybe this one will go better. Uh, and maybe you just try and blow up the Winter Wyvern first. 
Oh, here they come. Archon are moving on in. They're going to be able to find the CM. Does end up popping the Ghost Scepter. Meanwhile, the Requiem of Souls comes out, but on to two BKB'd and Enraged Heroes. No damage being dealt with that one. CM ulti immediately interrupted as well. Oh, this is the team fight that Archon wanted. Shadow Fiend finally able to take out the Night Stalker, though. And it looks like Ursa is going to try and keep chasing over here. Winter's Curse down on top of Z Freak. He's going to end up falling. The Bristleback still alive, though. Quill Spray starting to mount on up. They do get the Aegis popped. Maybe the turnaround. Nice. So after the end of all of this, we do end up seeing the Night Stalker still dead, jumping forward. Shadow Fiend's going to fall as well. Oh, and Archon starting to turn it back around now. You thought that it was looking good for a second. Blink forward, Crystal Maiden, get eaten up by that bear. Swindle did make it away with the gem. Uh, wait, what? Swindle had the gem. Did he pass off someone else? He must have. Nice. I think he dropped his TP. Oh, they, they ended up getting it on their own courier. Okay, so they do have the gem. That's pretty important. Yeah, definitely making sure that they're able to keep that in. Now if you're Archon, it might be time to sort of push on in and take on down a tower at this point in time. Uh, it seems like they're going to try and catch the, uh, the Darkseer up here in the top lane. It's going to be a difficult one. Does end up casting on out a Surge, and yeah, he's going to be up there cutting the creep wave and realizes the inherent danger of the situation as he jumps on over out of there. Oh, he's getting so greedy here. Oh, he More actually snowball. gets the max range snowball. Oh god, it connects! He's gonna be able to cancel any TPs at this point. Right click, Surge. Is he gonna be able to get out of there? I don't think so. I think he's dead at this point. Vacuum back. <laughs> oh my god, the jukes are real. But now Night Stalker's here and he's gonna end up falling. Swindle trying to do everything that he can. Walrus Punch comes down. Oh, and a big old spider just gonna try and run away from this one. <laughs> well, he tried to make the play. I thought he was going up for an extra Iron Shell, but I think he just thought that they were uh, closer than they actually were. He probably could have got the four staff TP out near the side shop, but. Of course, he doesn't have this nice overarching vision that we do, so... <laughs> but, again, it looks like now is now's the time. Maybe even try and force a uh, Dex or buyback, like you've got some really fast push from the Brew if you all just want to group up mid, or conversely, you can just head off your own way, spam up a little bit more, and head towards uh, a couple bigger items. wonder if our, uh, our bear, you know, we saw the BKB pop, that was pretty key, dealing with the Requiem. I'd like to see, you know, can we go like the Sheep? But that's a classic. Ursa classic right there. Oh yeah, there, there you go. I, I think that would be pretty cool, definitely. It, it's always cool to see those sort of builds come on back into style as well. Um, have we talked much about the Crimson Guard yet? I think that that's a, a pretty important item here mm -hmm. as well for this Bristleback. Like, the fact that you're going to be able to sort of soak up all of those little mini right-click damage coming out from the Spiderlings is going to be pretty important. And also just on top of the creeps as well. Like, it, it's it's pretty decent, I think. Yeah, and it's... I'm still very concerned. Yeah, it, it is a good item for the situation where he was behind. Um, like, a lot of Bristlebacks, you want to be looking into something like S and Y right away, maybe into a BKB, like, I'm a fighter, I'm a brawler, but he ended up, you know, a little bit knocked down by a, a couple pegs taken out, as it were, down in that bottom lane, so uh, the Crimson Guard's almost like a recovery, but you're up against Ursa, Night Stalker, and Tusk, like, three heroes, and Brood, of course, the Spiders. They're all getting in there and doing the right-click, so it's definitely one of the best Crimson Guard games you're ever really going to see. Uh, so certainly a yeah. value item, but I'm sure he wishes he was a little bit richer. Certainly. Something that you want to be able to have. And the Broodmother, ready to jump on top of people, looks to be building on into that MKB now, potentially. Not something that you always see on the Broodmother, but considering there's the evasion, I, I don't think that there's any way this is a crit here, right? She would have seen the Talisman of Evasion already. Yeah, no, I'm sure it's MKB, just because you also have to deal with the Solar Crest anyway from the uh, right. Bounty Hunter, so it makes a lot of sense. Really? Well, Guardian Greaves could be picked up now by the Darkseer if they want. They're going to run and knock down at this Tier 2 tower yet again. They've had two initiations go poorly so far for them at this place, and maybe the third one going to be a little bit better as they finally able to take on down that tower. Only one more standing. Part, part 3 went much better than Part 1 and 2. Yeah, the deja vu coming out here, so... Uh, at least now, a little bit more map control than going on here. In terms of the warding build, man, how annoying is this? Like, if you switch to the Radiant Vision, you actually look how much value they get out of a ward. It's like nothing. Yeah. It's so frustrating to play against. I, I would consider Night Stalker to be... He's basically as frustrating to play against right now as someone like the Alchemist or the Doom, really. Because the man, yeah. the way that you have to ward as a support up against Night Stalker is just brutal. I mean, look at this ward down here in the bottom lane. Like, what is this? This, they will never see this ward unless it's against a Night Stalker. You basically have to sit them in the middle of the paths in order to see anything. Yeah, it's it's, it's really tough. And it, I think also as well, considering it's this game of vision where Roshans are so important and they can be taken so quickly, you really want to be able to find you know the 
the vision that you need so that that way you can spot when something's going on and with just the absolute none that they've been able to have it's it's a little bit impressive that they've been able to stay in this game at, at least to this point but uh, it does feel more and more like complexity are losing a little bit of a grip on being able to uh, really take this one here and i'm just looking over at our bear friend he still hasn't made his choice there are a couple options here i don't i don't know if he really wants to go over something like the mkb obviously if you guarantee the hits it means that your fury swipes get you know that that's your main damage source anyway so you just got to make sure they're connecting but similarly like the abyssal blade might be the other uh big option it's he's it's now up to almost 3200 gold the decision should be coming shortly I, I think that it would make sense to be going for that abyssal because you also get that little extra bit of uh, HP that I like on him. It, it's it's not substantial. Like he hasn't been dying, but a little bit helps. I think you don't want to go like completely and totally overboard with it. But the fact that you would be able to get that little extra uh, bit from it while also finding that solid lockdown, I, I think that he would be in a really really comfortable place there. Plus also just getting the extra bonus damage. I mean, while he does stack on up and accelerate very quickly with the fury swipes, his first couple of hits aren't super impressive and if you want to be able to burst down the cm uh maybe in the extended team fight you're not going to have enough chance to be able to pop out two um two hits of overpower so it's kind of difficult yeah i'm just seeing um the other items like blink four staff up on top of the fluff now for the test that, that completely changes the hero once you have the blink it's like a whole new power spike for like the amount that you're able to do and perform with with a, a tusk right so you can blink in can make some big saves in the middle of like the vacuum or if the requiem is about to go off on your ally and you get a blink in and just because he's disabled mm. like frostbite or something like that i mean that's completely that can be game winning in a lot of situations and it's all just from just your little support tusk you know what a hero absolutely what a hero everybody <laughs> loves tusk he's just the best <laughs> um continuing to play the spider games over here swindles finding anybody that he possibly can and, uh still waiting potentially for that next roshan as well as those key items and it's going to be a long one another couple of minutes before that guy is going to respawn and you kind of uh, have to give the vision advantage and uh, everything else to Archon being able to take it, but it's going to come down to who wins this next team fight. And I feel like always in these moments before Roshan ends up coming back around, you're going to see a couple of smokes, people trying to find the other team and find one or two pickoffs, so that that way you can't contest Roshan. And then if you do that, potentially you force a buyback if you win that fight, and sometimes just be game, depending upon how well the engagements really go. And Radiant doing their best now to be able to uh, place that vision down. Do put a ward down in lane as well for the bounty hunter. Uh, he's he's going to get a little bit separated from the herd now. Arctic burn down on top of him, but he's just going to walk away, be uh, comfortable doing bristleback things. Yeah, he has reached a point where he's tanking enough where he's just not worth uh, dealing with. <laughs> just like, alright, whatever, just get, like, do your thing. It's just not really worth that engagement factor they would have to commit in order to bring him down. And now with an MKB done, life, life gets harder again for ping. But with that satanic, no, maybe he can tear into somebody and save himself on these fights if he's not getting uh, locked down, and and even himself, like he could end up getting blinded by the crippling fear. And every night time, that's fifty percent, so it can be mm. devastating when you're trying to life steal back up with the the satanic and can't hit anything. And then Ken, bottom lane, Jaya's going to be pushing out this tier 2 tower, so still not taking a, a very convincing fight at this point. We do have the potential to TP on back now for the uh, Ursa if he wants to, but the tower already down. He's going to be back on over here into the base. Maybe thinking about trying to reinitiate here and take this next Roshan. Still waiting for their moment as the MKB is going to be picked up by the Ursa. Yeah, I like this little, little, little smoke play here. You go to the Dire Vision. Oh, this. It's so hard to smoke up against the Night Stalker, though. Oh, geez. Vlad, I'm gonna spot it up first, and I guess here we go. Be able to catch here. He still does pop the Crimson Guard, ready for the fight. Now, Silent Step on the CM. Ghost Scepter gets popped. Gonna toss out another little shards. Oh man, Monkey's Forever is falling very quickly. Does end up going down. Now the Winter's Curse on top of the Shadow Fiend. He is going to end up falling as well. Z Freak taking a heck of a lot of damage. And it looks like right now Archon entered a pretty good space after being able to eliminate those key components. Oh, CM Ulti turning it back around. Jai was actually separated and he's not gonna be able to get in on top of her. But he doesn't end up falling and raging through that Ulti. Right clicks abound. He's going to take a hit. And now. All of a sudden, complexity fighting back. 
that wall was so perfectly placed by Swindle. Uh, he completely trapped the two of them in there, resulting in Fluff having to TP out, and of course Jo going down just downright. And again, like Vlad, this guy, I tell you, it's so rare that you actually see a Crystal Maiden get off this many ultimates. And look how many stuns there are on, on Archon. Like, you've got the Night Stalker, and you've got, I mean, basically, Ursa could just walk up and annihilate her if he's anywhere nearby. So, uh, just really well positioned. The, the last couple got cancelled by Snowballs, but he's hitting his stride again. That fight's just over if it's not for the freezing field and again that wall. I think that she's the MVP right now for complexity, honestly. Has been able to just pick up and itemize exactly the way that she's needed to. Uh, always having her earn charges like used on up to sustain throughout a team fight or finish off those last couple of kills. And of course, what we've been talking about for the past couple of minutes here, the freezing fields. Uh, is going to be a little bit out of position here as I talk about the, <laughs> the caster's curse and how great she's been playing. But getting covered by the team, they're not going to be able to find this one. Vacuum back onto three. Who thought about bringing him up onto the cliff, but isn't going to be able to do that. Instead, it looks like Archon is going to be able to walk away from this one. So you think she's out of position, but really she's just baiting. Because I mean, like, I mean, we, we don't even know the depth of Vlad. Like, we haven't <laughs> even begun to understand this guy. And Freezing Field's back up. Who knew this cooldown was only 90 seconds? I know, it's very impressive. It's it's definitely going to be, especially with this Blink Dagger I'm imagining, is going to be the next item for the CM. All of a sudden, you're able to stay in better position, and the fights don't start with the Night Stalker finding you anymore. You're behind the enemy line, you're behind your teammate way, way further, and it's just going to be um, able to jump forward exactly where she wants to get that freezing field off. Yeah, I wonder, I'm assuming that's what's uh, like BKB will sometimes see, but it is a little risky up against the Ursa, so uh, maybe just, I guess it would be a lot of personal preference, like if you think you can continue to get these really good positioning and you just want to get them as fast as possible as is, he's tanky, oh, he's actually turning. He's going to be able to catch their snowball forward, not going to be able to find anybody, but Bristleback, like you mentioned, very, very tanky, and I think that he's comfortable walking away from this one, no, is going to slow and eventually get taken down by that Broodmother. All right, this might be the moment right now that we've been waiting for. Archon feeling very comfortable with where they've at. They've got the Aegis up now as well. On Jio, they're going to get ready to jump on in with these Blink Daggers, and Wall gets dropped defensively. I mean, this is what you can do now. It lasts 45 seconds. Yeah, 45 second duration now. Like, it's just so great to have Muggy's sidesteps. It's being a little bit cheeky over here with the Broodmother. Backing back in yet again. And they're just going to have to back on out. The problem is, is they don't have all of the lanes pushed in right now. Mm -hmm. So top right now is getting pushed very heavily by the Radiant. They are going to actually have to back on out, I think, or at least send one more person down there. Uh, they're, they're thinking about it. They might be waiting. But again, this lane is just pushing out so hard. Four range creeps as well as a bunch of melees. I don't think it's going to be able... It's going to do some amount of damage, but with no TP boots right now, as well as the threat of getting their barracks taken, um, it looks like Complexity are... Just gonna be sitting pat for now as they wait down for the the wall to finally expire. I think um, items that I'd like to see come out would be more force staffs. We we kind of talked about like that's why I think Swindle's uh, that was his first item before the blink was a force staff. And if you could get another one on top of Vlad, that point where Zizzy just died back there, you probably could have been able to escape with the second one. Oh boom! Oh so good. Thanks Vlad. Thanks for making me sound smart, buddy. So I'll pick up Nicely that done. Staff. That's, that's pretty good. It's always nice when that ends up happening, or like in the draft screen. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, they should probably go now, and then they end up picking the hero that you called out. Oh, it's good. Yeah, it's, nice. it's just so good up against the Ursa, right? Like, he only has a limited amount of lockdown. He did go for the MKB, so chat. Switch chat, always right. Good job, guys. And you guys were calling for it. And it looks oh, like there we go. In. Snowball forward. Walrus punch as well. Oh, my goodness. He got thrown all the way back on over there. Huge damage being expended all the way by back immediately by the Shadow Fiend. He needs to be back into there. The illusions are everywhere, though. And Jayo is finally going to end up getting hit by that Frost Blast as well as the Freezing Field coming out. Another huge kill. It isn't onto all of them, but it is onto the key one. The raid boss, Mr. Jayo, does end up finally falling. Thanks very much to that Crystal Maiden doing everything that she needed to do and the buyback on the shadow fiend expended uh but i feel like that one is definitely worth it for taking on out the aegis and the ursa my god white beard <laughs> so sneaky <laughs> so sneaky and blink dagger also going to be picked up now on him but it's back in base so for now at least he needs to keep on hanging out with no tp scroll he's gonna just go on away from there and the courier actually almost would have been able to spot him Oh god, that would have been really bad. 
but they're going in for the, the kill now. This might be the moment where they're feeling comfortable. They have enough. They don't have a uh, buyback. They do have a buyback on that side. So if they want to fight this one, they can. They're not going to have a Winter's Curse back up for another 30 seconds. Maybe this is the moment. If you're in Ursa right now, you don't want to buy back, though. Dyer's middle tower is under no, I think they can hold uh, without it. Just trying to use the Ice Shards, trying to slow them down. The Crippling Fear, trying to delay this tower push. and It looks like they pretty much have this one secured. Oh, man. Getting so unlucky with these uphills. There we go. As soon as the tower goes, they start to turn around now. Oh, no. The Courier does end up falling. Okay, no big deal. Walrus Punch on top of the CM. She's going to go Scepter through this one, but I think she still ends up dying, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're all on top of her, and she's just going to take them on a merry little chase and make sure that the rest of her carries are able to get out of there. So, very nice little Crystal Maiden doing the support duties everybody uh, wants them to do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well that's, that's a pretty big win. I mean, losing just the tower, obviously not ideal, but you really don't want to lose any more gold on this bear. Uh, you know, you already you had to have the death. You don't have the buyback, too. And they'll smoke up. It's still fairly dangerous, I would have to say. In terms of uh, complexity. Yeah, it, is. It, it certainly is. I mean, I, we talked about how they were coming back into it, but it's still a 15k EXP lead. 7,500 net worth as well. If they take another couple of fights like that, though, and this might be one of them. Winter's Curse again on top of the Shadow Fiend. This is going to be a dieback right now if they are able to get him. One more right click. No, he turns around. Satanic has popped as well, and he's going to survive through it. That is huge. All right, now again, Whitebeard gets separated. He's going to take a little bit more hits from Z's here. A little bit more with the stacks of the Vicious Nasal Goo getting tossed out. But again, just sacrificing himself for the team. He's going to find Monkeys Forever tracked up now. The bonus movement speed as well as the surge. BKB is popped. Still chasing. This Bristleback is so freaking scary and fast. And yeah, this track movement speed is uh, allowing them to keep up with them, but it does look like he'll be safe thanks to that four staff. All right, well, here we go again. Really nice. <laughs> no buyback this time, though. Nothing to worry about. Yeah, and they're going to be going for the high ground yet again. It looks like they're actually content to push on out the top lane now and try and take another set of the uh, Tier 3 towers. They're feeling like it's more important there to get them off of both of them so that way they can find their other initiation point. Ursa immediately tears apart the Crystal Maiden. That is actually really, really important now. Oh, Reckoning of Souls does come out. No, ends up getting bashed by the Monkey. Oh, the Monkey Team Bar. Huge value right there. And now the Bristleback getting chased down. Z-Freak is going to fall. Snowball forward. Gem on the ground oh god and complexity lose four <laughs> huge <laughs> they actually lose jo just from the quill sprays but we'll consider that okay uh so no buybacks of course on ping it wasn't his dieback that's a little bit sad but at least you took that fight that you lost at least it's there right it's not at your base so it does look like the majority of complexity will be back up before there's a big push hmm yeah, absolutely. Roshan's still a, a ways away before it's going to end up uh, being back up. And right now, Mu with the AC is going to be comfortable as well to uh, do a little bit more structural damage here to these towers. I, I think that if they're able to get a creep wave in with them, they would be very comfortable at least trying to push out these waves um, and make sure that, you know, you, when the final fight does end up happening, they're not all pushed up at your tier threes already. Uh, also, Whitebeard now trying to cut the creep wave a little bit with those Splinter Blasts, which do oh so much damage. They do end up finding the spider. No reveal at this point in time. It's just going to be a Shiva's guard to clear on out those creeps. So Peng, you know, he'll be up. And, he, well, he, he might be close to buyback timer. Oh, it's still two minutes away. And uh, he will likely have the gold for it. Yeah, he, he'll definitely have the gold for it, at least when the timer is back up. And I guess if you're Archon now, you probably just wait to that next Roche. And you're, at this point, you take it in about, you know, five seconds flat. So I, I consider it, you know, not as dangerous as it once was. And I think they'll just look to secure that. Slap it on probably the bear again. Just uh, head, head on in, full tilt. Now the bristle back up forward yet again. Don't want to commit all of it yet, but they do get the Crippling Fear down as well as the Void. And kind of waiting for a Silver Edge to pop out at some point. I think that that would be the item to really be able to uh, dismantle this Bristleback. They do end up jumping on top of the CM and she is going to fall. Broodmother picking up that kill. 
and now separated again is going to be the bounty hunter they do end up having the reveal i think to be able to find him yes he is going to drop it again that gem up just doing too much work for that night stalker and two heroes dead now is this the moment where they're going to go Keep on asking it, and haven't seen it quite yet. <laughs> well, unfortunately, at least for Archon, again, and very fortunately for Complexity, uh, we're going to be having another extremely late Roshan, almost maximum time, so about two two, mi two minutes and 40 seconds. And uh, that might just be the saving grace here for Complexity. They are starting to stack up cheeses now as well. I mean, Broodmother has one there uh, in her inventory, along with just a ton of other really big items right now. All right, they end up finding the Bristleback. It kind of feels like they're not going to have enough to brace them down, though, without the rest of the team coming on. And never mind, <laughs> I was right there. Look at him get torn apart. Oh, my God. Lotus uh, Shell is also up now. Top of the Brood, I think that's what that was, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but regardless, they're just going to be able to tear down these towers. And bottom one going to be soon falling. It looks like they're going to uh, shift their focus down to make sure that this ends up happening with the Deso on up, as well as the creeps in the base to be able to take away that backdoor protection. This is going to fall very, very quickly. And yeah, it is a Lotus Orb that's up there. Create a couple of illusions. Vacuum on back, but the B is popped as well. They're jumping forward. Huge initiation right there. And again, oh, Shadow Fiend just torn apart. This might end up being it. But again, the Breathing Field is so huge from the Crystal Maze. The buyback on both the Bristleback as well as the Shadow Fiend. That is going to be the Ursa falling. Whitebeard, I was just talking about how I thought this was going to be the one, and he's taking a ton of damage right now. He ends up dropping three heroes dead right now, and the only people left are going to be the Night Stalker as well as the Tusk, who end up tossing on back his shards that that way they don't get chased on down. But oh, maybe going to be able to jump on back in again. A big gold swing. That's the silence down on top of Swindles, and he might have overstayed his welcome. No, nice four staff. Reinitiation yet again. Vlad is there. Does have the four staff ready to jump forward. Catches with a couple of spells, but this this CM is really not afraid. Yeah, I think. I mean, obviously they they feel very comfortable pushing forward. They know it's only the two of them up on the map. No surprise. Mm -hmm. the side. Oh, they might actually get them with the track hold. Nice. God, huge. We do have buyback on everybody pretty much. There's the buyback by the tusk. Key ones though. Are we going to be able to see them come on out to buy back by the Brood? Ursa, you know you want to. Be a cool kid. Keep on applying all of these damage over time things here. And wow, they're going to give like it they're up? like they're going to try and wait it out. Oh, man. That's a huge win for Complexity. I mean, if they can just get out of here without losing too many, they've got lots of four staffs to try and save Ziz. It is only, it's the melee rack, so the, the more important one, the range rack still stands. A lot of gold on the CM. She ends up buying the E-Blade before she ends up uh, thinking that she's going to die. Lays on down, a little st <laughs> stares at him for a sec. Yeah, that's how it's going. Uh, <laughs> this giant spider. But now Roche back up. CM dead. I think that they're uh, feeling very comfortable to push on in here. Just your typical, you know, uh, E-Blade, Crystal Maiden. Pretty standard. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Pretty much every single game, you know, and who, who, who needs any of those other items? So, and they're very nice, again, I mean, we've talked about all these melee brawlers. Gotta, gotta love yeah. that. And try and slow down the Ursa, maybe after the BKB. We know that those charges are starting to wear down. He is down to the five seconds. And the Broodmother, also down to five seconds. So, becoming less relevant, and Crystal Maiden getting a little bit back on the upswing now. I mean, we've already seen it with the uh, Freezing Fields, but now with that E-Blade, too. Well, and I mean, right now, <laughs> Crystal Maiden has 11 base uh, armor total. Like, she's actually one of the higher armor heroes on the on the team now because of all of that agi she gets from the uh, the E Blade, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, it's like you said, not often that you end up seeing that, but I, I like it a lot, and it's going to mean, of course, also that if you do end up wanting to truly try and combo somebody down, you can do it that much more quickly. How often I feel like do we see I, I, the Broodmother at the top of the net worth is pretty surprising to me. She's really been able to have a big impact on this game consistently with Monkeys Forever here. Yeah, especially 50 minutes in. Like, uh, that, that's pretty crazy. I mean, you don't really have any other Flash Farmers on the side of the dire. Like, Ursa relies a lot on Roshan and kills for uh, a lot of his net worth, and he's been doing fairly well. But yeah, I think maybe just a couple too many deaths for him to be right on top of the chart. And uh, mm. Brood just being able, like, we've seen Monkeys consecutive, er, consistently having a lot of spiders out on the field, and he's living through a lot of these fights, 10-3 and 8. So, uh, yeah, definitely surprising, though. Um, and, and a little bit odd, like, that we don't have any more wave clear, really, 
Um, you can't even really consider Brood wave clear. She just has spiders that do their thing for her. So both teams, one of them smoked in their base, the other one just sitting in their base. Uh, <laughs> not often that you see that. Finally, as nighttime ends up coming around, darkness off of cooldown, uh, we do see Archon move on out and feel comfortable making their way across the map. Kind of interesting there. And Swindle. Swindle has a lot of buttons hit right now. He's got the uh, <laughs> the 10 active built right now <laughs> with his spells and Jeez. all his items. So uh, hopefully he'll be able to get them all off. I, really, it's all about just priorities, so hoping to get a really nice sheep. It's it's a little sad when you have to try and sheep someone like Jo when he's got the, uh, the Aegis, so maybe trying to bring down monkeys before he can get off a cheese would be pretty clutch. Does he have mm, buyback? Definitely. No, he doesn't, so he also has the cooldown. So it doesn't look like there's there's no buyback bots, which would be pretty crucial in terms of actually winning this fight um, for like the game secure. So it looks like there's still a mm. bit more time here for Complexity to really farm up and try and mount another bold defense. The thing though is it's it's so hard to really do that at any point, and they don't want to leave their base at all when it's nighttime. Like you see right here, the bristleback barely willing to move on outside the base to farm on up this big creep wave here, and. He, that's with the rest of his team standing right behind him. He's going to get a lot of these spiders right now, though. Just apparently feeding these ones. It does look like the smoke's going to be able to come on forward there to jump on top of him. Walrus punch down as well. The four staffs are keeping him alive. E Blades onto the catapult. A little bit unfortunate there. And it looks like the bristleback is going to fall, I do believe. Requiem down on top yet again. And this is the freezing field off to the side. Not going to be able to do a ton besides kill off that Winter Wyvern. So they lose the bristleback for the Winter Wyvern at this point in time. And million and ten particles all over the screen. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was a, uh, a good maneuver there by Archon to actually get out because it's it's pretty hard. Like You just blew all your big nukes right on top of the Bristleback, so you, uh, you're using a lot of your spells, and then you're using also Enrage and your BKB on your Ursa, so if, let's say, Swindle got in there with a big vacuum wall on top of all that, that could have been devastating right mm -hmm. after, but they got out, ducked out just in time, and the limited vision of the uh, Radiant, if you look to just their vision, there weren't any tracks placed up as well, so they can only see this fire, and that makes it so much harder for Swindle. Like, all they can see is monkeys right now. They can't see anything back here. Mm. Very frustrating, and they do end up using the vacuum there, as well as the wall drop. This is going to embolden them to be able to push on over here into this mid lane and take on down this tower in just a second. Night Stalker going forward for one last hit. There's the E-Blade down on top of him. Not quite opting to use this yet. Vlad jumping back. Nice four staff, keeping that separation. BKBs are now popped. Or the Broodmother needs to get out of there. Does get turned into a sheep by Swindles after the blink forward, but no follow-up quite yet. All right. Put it back and forth yet again, and it looks like Winter Wyvern, after respawning, is trying to get back into the fray as quickly as possible. <laughs> it looks like Ziz will be back up by the time uh, anything actually happens here. This is like a horror movie from the side of the Radiant. I just keep switching over to their vision, and they can't see anything. Like, <laughs> like anything at all. They have no idea what is happening in this game. Heroes just randomly appear out here near the creep wave. There's, you know, you know the observers outside the base, it's so easy for them to get rid of it with the Night Stalker. No. It really is. It's it's relatively disheartening. I'm really surprised we haven't seen a Silver Edge quite yet in this game. I mean, obviously the Lotus Orb is great for being able to toss that out with the Tusk, but one of those items that the, the breakability to be able to use that on the Bristleback just makes such a huge difference. Yeah, and there's nothing to debuff it either um, from the side of complexity, at least not yet. So um, he doesn't like he doesn't have a BKB, there's no Abaddon or something like that. And I don't think that they're going to end up... Well, Darkseer probably eventually is going to upgrade into Guardian Greaves, uh, but while still having the Boots of Travel, I would imagine. Um, but nonetheless, it's it's still a, a pretty dangerous proposition as the Crimson Guard is up for the Bristleback, potentially building on into... Uh, it looks like he's going to be going for the AC himself. I'm trying to, is there any concern as this game wears on for either team? Like, we can already see it's starting to kind of level out near the top. Everyone's kind of starting to coagulate around 23,000 net worth. You got three heroes on the Dire, two on the Radiant, and then it's a big steep drop off hang towards Ziz. How does, uh, how does this play out over the next 15 minutes? That's the, that's the question, it seems. Yeah, I, 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 it's hard to tell. Um... I mean, Shadow Fiend obviously can just turn into this sort of ridiculous tanky monster of 
you know, awesomeness where you just sort of stand up and walk in front of people and right click people that doom. You don't even need to necessarily rely upon Requiem of Souls anymore for your damage because your right clicks just become so as pre- imp- impressive as you build into maybe a Scotty later on or something else like that after you trade out your Aquila. But again, there's always going to be the problem here that you don't have a, a grave or something else to be able to keep you alive if the Ursa gets on top of you. So when this Abyssal is finished off by the Ursa, I feel like that's going to be a turning point in this game because you're either going to be able to use it to break the CM ulti or you're going to be able to use it to catch either the Shadow the shadow Fiend out. And there's still a lot of room to grow, I feel like, for Archon's side in terms of... Uh, key items that haven't been picked up yet as i mentioned the silver edge also the abyssal there for the um the ursa and enrage is just such a great spell like you're gonna always be able to get off your uh your abilities i feel like as long as you don't get caught by like an immediate hex also how how did moo get second on net worth on a night stalker that is like the craziest thing i mean i understand he's got you know some decent kills and everything like that but 250 cs and he had the minus for a long time it is so rare yeah, that you see a Night Stalker. This is like the equivalent of like a Clockwork was somehow still second highest net worth without that many kills, like, you know, sort of short of 50 kills or something for your team. I mean, he's died only twice, so that's a key component of it. It does look like now they're getting ready to uh, get into a position here to potentially take a fight. All Swindles is going to end up getting caught out here. Silence is going to come down soon to follow and imagine. There's the E-Blade, keep him alive a little bit longer, and they're just going to back on out. Don't want to take this one if they don't have to. BKB now popped as well. Moo, the big old Red Knight Stalker, is just going to run on out of here. Yeah, that was a very smart BKB, because you don't want to force your team to have to commit to something. Uh, like, they don't want to have mm-hmm. to turn around and save Moo or anything like that. And it looks like they'll just head right on into Roche. Smoke. So, can they stop this one? That's the question. Oh, there were smokes on the way, but they sent it back to get someone's MKB. Looks like it's for a ping. And, oh, does he not have buyback? He actually doesn't have buyback. Wow. Oh, God. That's a little crazy. That's really terrifying. 930 gold away from it. Okay, they do end up circling around this Night Stalker, but it's a little bit hard to uh, sneak up on that guy. <laughs> Looks like they're going to be going on up to the top lane, though, and not really in position to be able to defend this at this point. Archon might be a little bit caught out. If they're able to get up into the high ground or potentially find them, uh, this is Ward isn't going to give you any vision right now. Sorry, CM. This is, uh, this is a Night Stalker game. <laughs> yeah, it's just so sad. And it's not even like um, when someone on the other team just has a gem and you have to be really sneaky with your wards and like put them on, you know, unsuspecting spots and everything like that. Like, no. <laughs> like, this is just Night Stalker. There's no wards. You're not allowed. Yeah. Bristleback getting chased now. Oh, daytime. Blink forward is going to be able to hit with the shards not catching. Snowball will, but I don't think they have enough to bring him down. Might have actually overextended a little bit if they try to turn on this right now for Complexity. I guess it's a little bit too worrying, but it is daytime. Like, that was a moment there where Complexity might have been able to turn that one back around. But the moment has passed, I do believe. Yeah, this uh, <laughs> this is turning into a long one. I wonder if Monkey's... I guess he hasn't really bought anything for a while. Just sitting on what he has, trying to maybe offer some farm up to his allies. Again, we, remo- we uh, return to the dreaded nighttime. Can they make something happen? Oh, they're going right on Sea Freak. Gonna be able to take him on out. Monkey's forever down. Winter's Curse gonna hit onto Swindles. He is gonna fall so quickly now. This might end up being it, I believe. Vlad gonna be able to stay alive a little bit longer. There's the CM ulti, but it's not gonna be hitting anybody right now. Wall does fall, but no vacuum follow-up quite yet. And everybody from Archon making their way out of there. The buybacks came on out as well in full effect by the Darkseer. Needed to get back into that one to secure that they didn't end up getting taken down. But question is, can they take a second salvo? So that's Vacuum. Well, obviously Vacuum's back, but the wall's down. You still have the Requiem. It's definitely looking good for Aircon, and maybe waiting for that Abyssal Blade and the BKB on the Ursa. At least by the time he dies with Aegis, he should have them back up, which would be very important. Nighttime again. They end up hitting here on top of the Bristleback. 
still perfectly fine with it. A couple more right clicks coming out from Monkeys Forever. The Lotus Orb is out as well. He's going to be able to Frostbite the CM herself. Walrus Punch down now on top of the Bristleback again. BKB is popped for these. Not on top of anybody. This Ursa not really going to be able to do as much. Nice four staff keeping alive a little sheepy as he ends up getting sent away. Bristleback again. Going to keep on getting hit. But so many stacks right now of this. Oh my god. The Cool Spray is doing a lot. But I think that right now they're actually overextending. The Broodmother does end up falling. Jio is tracked up. And they're going to be able to take him down. No amount of enrage is going to keep him alive. But the Aegis, can they take him a second time? That's the real question. Mu is up in the middle of all of them again. These four staffs are paying so much dividends right now. Fluff and Stuff snowballed over his own shards. They do take the tier 3 tower. E-Blade again down on top of Mu. Silence down on top of the CM. She is going to be dead. Buyback immediately by her. Now the CM. Oh, able to interrupt the Requiem. That's not going to be able to do enough damage. And I think that the Shadow Fiend is going to Let end up go. falling. Oh god, they're doing it! Shio taking a ton of damage, but look at them all falling to the Sevolti! Monkeys Forever does end up popping the cheese, still alive. Buyback on the Shadow Feed again. If they're able to get out of here, I think that this is worth it. The second Requiem, not as cool as the first one, but Swindle's still chasing. Another track on up, they're gonna be able to keep up with them. There's the slow coming out from the E-Blade, and I think that they might have been able to do this one. Buybacks only on the Ursa, Night Stalker, and Tusk. So that's actually everybody that they're going to need it. The Broodmother, though, the key hero that's going to be out of these next couple of engagements. And again, Complexity Hold. 4,000 gold swing, mainly off of the back of that CM, dealing 4,700 damage in that fight. Well, she was chucking out E-Blades, throwing up the ultimate. They did lose the mid-melee racks, so it wasn't all for naught for Archon. And slowly but surely, they seem to be whittling down this Radiant base. And I don't think that even if they were to lose another fight, it seems like it's insurmountable right now, but complexity, definitely never say die. Looks like they'll head up to the well, mid lane. Here's the thing, they do have the brew down for another 80 seconds. This is their moment. If they, like, the CM ulti is going to be back up again in a second. They're going to have all of their big spells up. Uh, I think that Wall should be up in 30 seconds. He has TP boots. So I, if they take this fight right now, they can potentially go for tier fours and maybe just to end the game. Brood's not up for another minute. This is their moment. And I think that they're going to be going for it now. They're a four on five. Uh, potentially, yeah, they're just going for it right now. The refresher's done for winter, the though. Tower? That could be massive. Uh, are they... Yeah, I, they just need to be so careful about their positioning. If they get, they're separating out right now. This is exactly what they need to be able to do. Glimmer Cape Initiation, there's the Snowball Ford. Winter's Curse, but not going to be able to have enough damage right now to get on top of the Shadow Fiend. Lotus Orb, keeping him alive a little bit longer. Wacky Wall back, Fluff and Stuff is taking a good amount of damage here as well. There's the Requiem out. Jo dropping down to half HP. Can they bring down the Shadow Fiend? He ends up dying back. There goes the Ursa, though. They're turning this one around. The Illusions are dealing so much damage. Night Stalker has fallen as well. They're just going from person to person buyback by the Ursa though this could be the turning point still so many Lotus Orbs Bristleback looks like he might end up falling the key thing here right now if you take a look no buyback for the Crystal Maiden no buyback for the Shadow Fiend they do get vacuumed over and over again but where's the follow-up it looked good it looked great but I think that complexity might end up dying at this point in time it was a, it was a noble effort they were so close. Absolutely. That uh, that second winner's curse, my white beard was sick. Complete five man winner's curse. Uh, just allowing them to blow up. And he waited, I, honestly, it was like the last millisecond of the Lotus Orb before he threw it out. It was extremely well played. And now they're just, oh, look at that. Lotus Orb plays. Snowball spawned. Now it looks like they might be able to take on down this bristle back with everything else being tossed out. The four staff plays that the Lotus Orbs, all of it has been on point for complexity, trying to keep their buddies alive. They just don't have the damage to be able to deal with it. And at the end of the day, it looks like Archon is going to take what has felt like, oh, maybe they, they want it. Vacuum on top of four, but no, the, the Ancient does end up falling. Good game well played ends up getting called in what felt like a third game is just the first one. So more action in a second. 64 minute thriller. Thank you all very much for watching. Any thoughts <laughs> as to move into this next one? It was it just seemed like steadily the entire time Aircon were ahead, but you still weren't really sure if they were gonna close it out. But they did manage to uh, props to complexity, they hung out there hung in there for a pretty long time. We had some pretty pretty fun plays coming out with all our four staffs and our uh, let it goes from the Crystal Maiden, but oh, I'm excited for game two.